The Kraft Foods Company presents its traditional Easter program with Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers of Velveeta, the famous pasteurized processed cheese food that tastes so good and is so good for you. Yes, Velveeta is another of the Kraft family of fine foods. Foods you can depend on for delicious eating, for wholesome, healthy eating. So remember, to get the cheese food of quality, get Velveeta, the cheese food that's made by Kraft. Well, in the town of Summerfield, it's the day before Easter, and the great Gildersleeve's family is making elaborate preparations for the occasion. Marjorie has selected a new Easter outfit, Leroy has a new suit, and they've resolved to do something different this year, attend the Easter sunrise service. Of course, the great Gildersleeve hasn't heard about these early morning plans. It's something I've always wanted to do, Leroy. Yeah, it'll be keen. Boy, I can't wait to get up at four o'clock in the morning. Let's go talk to Anki. Anki! Hey, Aunt, where are you? In the den, children. Are we interrupting anything? No, not at all. Just glancing through the paper. <laughs> Looking for an Easter gift for Grace and Leela. Oh? Yeah, I guess I could get them some of these two-pound chocolate Easter eggs. They're not too expensive. Well, if you want to be cheap, why don't you get them an Easter rabbit and let him lay the eggs? <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, I'm not trying to be cheap. I'm just trying to hold down expenses. Easter's beginning to cost as much as Christmas. Speaking of Christmas, do you know what I want next time? Hey, Leroy, please. Now then, what's the purpose of this delegation? Well, Unky, we have the most marvelous idea. Tomorrow we're going to sunrise service. Yeah, we're getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning. 4 o'clock? Well, have a good time. Unky! Just leave quietly and come home quietly. You mean you don't want to get up at 4 o'clock? No. But, Unky, the sunrise will be beautiful. Hey, Marjorie, I've seen the sunrise. I worked my way through college delivering milk. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to the 11 o'clock service the way I always do. And I'll need my sleep, so I'll be alert when I pass the collection plate. I don't want to drop it again. <laughs> well, of course, I can drive Leroy and Bertie the, to the service, but I wish you'd come along. Oh, is Bertie going? She's singing in the choir. A hundred voices, huh? Well, I would like to hear Bertie sing. But if there are 99 other voices, I wouldn't hear much of Bertie anyway. <laughs> No, no, it isn't that, Bertie. But I intend going to the 11 o'clock service tomorrow. Had my day all planned. Very busy day. We all have a very busy day ahead, Anki. Yeah. I know Bertie's going to be busy. Bertie's going to sing like an angel at sunrise, then she's going to fly home and bake the ham. <laughs> you ought to see Bertie's choir roll, Bunk. Really? Oh, it'll be a beautiful spectacle, Anki. Cedar Hill will be banked with flowers. Yes, I read about that. Well, I've been there every year, and it's worth it just to hear those trumpets when the sun comes up. It is, Bertie. Oh, Easter's such a thrilling day. And, Unky, you'll see all the beautiful women in their new spring dresses. Uh... <laughs> well, if you children insist. <laughs> and a boy, Unk. Glad you changed your mind, Miss Gilsey. Well, I didn't exactly change my mind. I've been considering going for some time. But I wanted to be sure all of you were as willing to get up at 4 o'clock as I am. Oh, brother. <laughs> you say, look at Petey's window. They're all decorated for Easter. Gee, that rabbit holding the talcum powder looks just like Judge Hooker. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll go in. I still don't have gifts for the girls. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Jonas Dream. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? Uh, Peavy, uh, what would make nice Easter gifts for Grace and Leela? Well, Easter is usually a little chilly. How about giving them a hot water bottle? <laughs> uh, one for each, of course. No, uh, Peavy. How about some perfume? Perfume? Women like to dress up for Easter in a good perfume, and like this is the crowning touch. Uh, how much is it, Peavy? $12 an ounce. That's the crowning touch. 
<laughs> well, what the heck? Wrap up two bottles. It's Easter. Okay, well. Ah. Planning a big day, are you? Yes, indeed. Peavy, guess what important official is getting up at four o'clock in the morning for the sunrise service? The Reverend Mr. McNair? Hey. <laughs> well, he's got to be there. I'm thinking about a fellow who's just volunteering. You don't say. Yeah, taking the little family. And I'm passing the collection plate at the 11 o'clock service, too. Well, good for you. I went to both services one Easter. Yeah, that's so? I didn't sleep the night before, not wanting to miss the sunrise service. And by 11 o'clock, my eyes were so red, I wore dark glasses at church. <laughs> you did? And you know what the minister did? He lectured me for staying out all night. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But Mrs. Peavy and I always enjoy the sunrise services. Of course, it's usually a little foggy at that hour. Well, I haven't been up at that hour since I was an air raid warden. Well, you better take a flashlight. There's a tendency to bump into trees. Oh? If you're going to show off a new suit, it's well to take a cushion along. Peavy, I'm not the sort of person who just goes somewhere to show off. I'm wearing my old blue serge. Yeah, you can't hurt that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. It's quite a climb up Cedar Hill, Mr. Gildersleeve. Peavy, are you trying to discourage me? Oh, my, no. I consider it quite a rewarding experience. In fact, Mrs. Peavy and I would be going this year if she could stand the track again. Yeah, are you settling for the 11 o'clock service, are you, Peavy? Yeah, but between you and me and the gatepost, I'd rather get up at 4 o'clock and go with you than go to the 11 o'clock with Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> I don't follow you. She insists on wearing her new Easter bonnet. Well, what's the matter with it, Peavy? <laughs> <laughs> that bad, huh? Worse, it's one of those dove-on-the-nest affairs Oh Mr. Gildersleeve, I don't mind having people point at Mrs. Peavy's hat But when bird dogs start pointing at... <laughs> Peavy, it can't be that bad <laughs> No, no, I wouldn't say that <laughs> Gildersleeve, you're ready for the sunrise service. Yeah, I wonder if I will need this flashlight, Phoebe Sold. Uh, who's that? Oh, the judge. Here I am, Diogenes. <laughs> judge, what do you mean, Diogenes? With that flashlight, you must be looking for an honest man, and here I am. <laughs> All right, Judge. Hop in, Gilday. I'll take you home. Oh, thanks, Horace. That's where I'm headed. <laughs> Gilday. Why are you carrying a flashlight in the middle of the day? Well, I'll need it in the morning. I'm getting up at four o'clock. You're going to the sunrise service? You bet. Then I'm going to the eleven o'clock service. Well, you must have a new suit you want to display. Judge, you're as bad as Pete. I'm not going to church just to show off my clothes. Besides, I don't have a new suit to show off. I see. Here comes the bump, Gilda. Uh, oh. <laughs> what bumped me in the back of the head? That's my canteen. Canteen? What is all this junk in the back of your car? Thermos bottles, blankets, folding chairs, and a buffalo robe. <laughs> Judge, where are you going? On a safari? I'm taking Miss Matterhorn to the sunrise service. Will you need all this equipment? Well, you have to prepare for it. You're not just taking a flashlight, are you? Well, I... And besides what I have in the car, Miss Matterhorn is packing a lunch basket. A lunch basket? The road to Cedar Hill is narrow, Gilday. And with several hundred cars up there, it takes hours to get home. Miss Matterhorn and I enjoy the service, then spread our lunch and listen to the singing of birds and the clash of bumpers. <laughs> <laughs> that 11 o'clock service looks better and better. I thought it was all settled that you'd go. No, Marjorie, they can conduct the sunrise service without me. You, Leroy, and Bertie, go and enjoy yourselves. Well, I don't know why you don't go. My dear, I might not get back in time to pass the plate at the regular service. Judge says traffic is pretty heavy out there. Uncle, you've just cooled off on the idea. Well, I'll admit I'm not as keen about it as I was this morning. Why? Well, Peavy and the judge nettled me. They accused me of going just to show off my new Easter suit. But you don't have a new Easter suit. You just don't want to miss out on your sleep, that's all. That has nothing to do with it. 
I'm staying home as a matter of principle. All right, Unky. That's your final decision. That's my final decision. I'll get it! <laughs> All right, Bertie. Hello, Bertie. Good afternoon, Miss Soto. Come in. Thank you. Well, it's Grace. Hello, Throckmorton, Marjorie. Hello, Miss Tuttle. Grace, I was about to come over and pay you a visit. Really? Yeah, I have a little Easter gift for you. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you, but why don't you give it to me early tomorrow morning? Early tomorrow morning? Uh, Leroy told me you're all going to the sunrise service. He did? Well... Uh, uh, would it be terrible of me if I invited myself to go along? Oh, why, Leroy, Bertie, and I'll be delighted to have you go with us. Uh, Grace, I had no idea you planned to go to the service. Oh, I wouldn't miss it. Marjorie, you should see my Easter suit. Oh, I want to. It's blue pastel file with PK collar cuffs and gloves to match. Oh, it sounds darling. Yeah, it sounds great. What the heck is file? <laughs> And that isn't all. I have matching linen shoes and hat with file trim. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, brother. Isn't Easter thrilling? What are you wearing, Marjorie? Well, I have the cutest linen dress with a full skirt and a fitted top, and it has eyelet trim. Very smart. Yeah, I can see this is no conversation for a man. <laughs> oh, Throckmorton, here we are talking about our new outfits and not letting you get a word in. Well. I know you're going to be so handsome in your new Easter suit. Handsome? Well, thank you. <laughs> I like to see men dress up. You know, people don't look just at the pretty girls. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I hope you get a powder blue pinstripe. <laughs> I just love them. Well, I must go. See you bright and early in the morning, Trot. Yes, indeed, Grace. Bright and early. Bye-bye, Marjorie. Bye, Miss Tuttle. Unky, I thought you decided not to go to the service. You going after all, Mr. Gilsleep? And why shouldn't I go? Miss Tuttle talked him into it, Miss Marjorie. She had nothing to do with it. No, I thought you weren't going because of what the judge and Mr. Peavy thought. Why should I worry about what the judge and Peavy think? I'll put on my new suit and go. You don't have a new suit. It, well, I'll get one. A powder blue pinstripe? <laughs> well, I had that in mind anyway before Grace mentioned it. Yes, <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. How do you like your eggs? Scrambled, baked, poached, in an omelet? Mmm, now there's a beauty of an egg dish, an omelet, fluffy and light and golden brown. And for the most delicious omelet you ever tasted, try this popular cheese version you make with Velveeta, Kraft's smooth, melting, pasteurized, processed cheese food. Start by melting a half pound of Velveeta in the top of your double boiler. Then stir in a quarter of a cup of milk and keep stirring till this mixture is smooth. It'll just take a minute or two because Velveeta melts so easily, so perfectly. Then add the Velveeta mixture to four seasoned egg yolks and finish making the omelet as you usually do. When it's ready to serve, spread it with your favorite jelly. And mom, is it a wonderful main dish. It's extra good tasting because with every bite you'll enjoy Velveeta's fine, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And even more important, Velveeta makes this omelet especially nourishing. Two ounces of Velveeta just... Two ounces, the amount you get in a single serving of this Velveeta omelet, give you more of milk's vital food values than a big eight-ounce glass of milk. And you know how important those food values are to your family's good health. Cook with Velveeta often. Let this fine cheese food give you more delicious, more nourishing meals. Get a two-pound loaf of Velveeta tomorrow. Just be sure you get genuine Velveeta. It's the finest quality cheese food you can buy, and it's made only by Kraft. <laughs> Well, the great Gildersleeve had decided not to attend the Easter sunrise service with his little family when one of his girlfriends, Grace Tuttle, came over and mentioned how handsome he'd look in his new suit. Of course, the great man didn't have a new suit, but that was two hours ago. Isn't Unky home yet, Bertie? Not yet, Miss Marjorie. He's probably having trouble finding a suit. Well, he shouldn't have waited till the afternoon before Easter. No, ma'am. <laughs> I never saw a man change his mind so fast. <laughs> Neither did I, Bertie. First he said he wasn't going, then he said he was. Then he said he wasn't because he sprayed somebody think he was showing off a new suit which he bought, which he wasn't because he didn't. <laughs> That's okay. Then he said he was because Miss Tuttle thought he'd look handsome in a new suit which he didn't have, but which he would if he had it. So I hope he gets it. 
<laughs> so do I, Bertie. I don't want to be seen like this, Bertie. Oh, not mine, it's Miss Gilsey. Yeah, thanks, Bertie. What you got in the box, Miss Gilsey? Your new suit? Yeah, that's right. Unky, why'd you ring the doorbell? Well, seems that when I tried on my new suit, I left the keys in it. I was excited, I guess. Well, open the box, Unky. Let's see what you picked out. Yeah, all right. If I can get rid of some of this wrapping twine. Hey, what's going on? Hello, Leroy. Hi. Maybe I can help you, Unky. What's going on? I sure am anxious to see that. So am I, but what am I anxious to see? What's in there? Just keep your shirt on, Leroy. Did you get the one with the stripe? Yeah, white stripe. A white stripe? What's in there, a pole cat? <laughs> Leroy, don't be so silly. I'm not. I'm just trying to find out something. Yeah, I can't untie this knot. Where's my pen knife? Mr. Gilsey, how'd you get it so fast? Yeah, I practically had to grab it and run. Run with what? It still has to be let out, Bertie. Well, take the lid off and let it out. <laughs> Let's see what's in there. Yeah, there, there it is. Isn't that a beauty? Oh, it's beautiful, Unky. Ain't that something? Oh, for corn's sake. Nothing but a suit? My Easter suit, Leroy. I thought you weren't going to buy an Easter suit. Well, I... Marjorie, how do you like this necktie I bought to go with it? It's very striking, Unky. It should be with those baseball bats on it. <laughs> Leroy, they're not baseball bats. It's just a modern design. And he got the powder blue suit. <laughs> you don't think he'd come home with anything else after what Miss Tuttle said, did you? Oh, so that's why you bought a suit. You want Miss Tuttle to see you in it. Leroy, that isn't it at all. There'll be hundreds of other people who'll see me in it, too. Yeah, I mean... It... <laughs> hey, Bertie... You suppose you can give me a hand with a few alterations? The tailor couldn't get it ready today. Yes, sir. Of course, it's a little late, and i got to take a hymn in my choir robe. Well, I guess I am upsetting things a little. If we're going to get up at 4 o'clock, we should be getting to bed soon. Yeah, i got a lot of things to do. Well, so have I. But I'll help you with Unky's suit, Bertie. Yes, ma'am. No, let's not make a big thing of this. What we need is a little organization. And I'll be the organizer. Sure. We all have things to do, so let's do them. Bertie, you go do the things you have to do. Yes, sir. Marjorie, you and Leroy get the things done that you have to do. All right, Unky. What are you going to do? I'm going to set the alarm for 4 o'clock and go to bed. <laughs> what a character. Leroy, there'll be a lot of things to do in the morning, and I'll be up bright and early doing them. How's the rest? It's four o'clock. You said you were going to get up and start doing things. Yeah. First thing I'm going to do is turn off this alarm and go back to sleep. Where is the darn thing? Look out. You're pushing it off the table. You? My goodness. Make it stop. Step on the thing, Leroy. Do something. It's hiding from me under the bed. I got it. Oh. Thank you, my boy. Good night. <laughs> We're going to the sunrise service, remember? Sunrise? Oh, yes. Up, everybody. Rise and shine. Marjorie, Bertie, Leroy, up. Are you kidding? Everybody's up but you. Hey. <laughs> Don't just sit there in bed shopping. Rise and shine. <laughs> further is it? Uh, can't be far. The way the traffic is slowing down, Leroy. <laughs> Such a winding road. Yeah. A little <laughs> rough, too. Hey, Grace, I hope your Easter outfit isn't getting rumpled. It's so beautiful. <laughs> oh, I I'm fine. You look lovely. How can you tell? It's dark. <laughs> <laughs> now, Leroy... Marjorie, how are you and Bertie doing? All right, Unky. 
I just hope Bertie isn't going to be late to join the choir. Oh, don't worry about Bertie. Oh, we'll make it. We'd be there now if Hunk hadn't spent ten minutes tying his tie. <laughs> well, Leroy, I had to get it right. This is Easter, you know. Are you stopping, Unky? Yeah, this is as far as we can go, Marjorie. Cars are all parked ahead of us. Well, let's get out and start hiking. <laughs> Unky, aren't we awfully far away? No, my dear, I'll get you there. Just follow me. I know a shortcut. We got plenty of time. There's no sign of no sunrise yet. I can't see a thing in this fog. Hey, Unc, where's your flashlight? Flashlight? Well, last night I put it right where I could lay my hands on it this morning. And you don't know where you put it? Yes, I do. It's right on the dresser at home. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Follow me. Gosh, we haven't seen anybody since we left the car. Well, Leroy, not many people know about this shortcut, I guess. Unky, do you know where you're taking us? Of course I do. I think. Yeah, sure. Yeah, this is the top of the hill. Right here. <sighs> this is the top of a hill? For what hill? <laughs> this don't look like Cedar Hill to me. Well, we... We came up the back way, Bertie. Oh, we certainly did. What a climb. Where is everybody, Unky? Uh, well... Hey, the fog's lifting a little. Oh, yes, you can see up here. Look, there's a choir and everybody. Where? Across the ravine on the other hill. <laughs> Half a mile away. Oh, fine. Uncle Mort, you and your shortcuts. I'm afraid Bertie will never make it in time to sing with the choir. Well, I'm sorry, Bertie. I'm very sorry. Oh, they'll get along without Bertie. We'll just have to watch things from here. Hey, there's a lot of moving around. What are they getting ready to do? They're going to have a pageant, Leroy, telling the story of Easter. Yeah? Well, here we are, all dressed up, and we can't be with the crowd. What an Easter. Well, Mr. Gillsleeve, there was only a few on hand for the first Easter when they saw the rock was rolled away. Oh, that's right, Bertie. We shouldn't forget that. I guess nobody there put much importance on fine clothes. I guess they didn't. Listen. They're playing music. They're getting ready to sing about the crucifixion. Oh, Bertie, you were going to sing that. Yes, ma'am. Bertie, will you sing it for us? Yeah, we'd like to hear it, Bertie. Won't you? I'd like to. Were you there? When they crucified my Lord Were you there When they crucified my Lord Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb. Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there 
when they crucified my Lord. How beautiful. Yes. We got lost, but we found the true spirit of Easter. Look, Aunt. The sun's coming up. It's a new day. Well, that's the meaning of Easter. A new day. And new hope for the world. will be with us in just 30 seconds. How nourishing can a sandwich be? That's easy. A sandwich made with Velveeta, Kraft's famous pasteurized processed cheese food, gives you more of milk's vital values than a big eight-ounce glass of milk. Imagine more high-quality protein, more calcium, more phosphorus, riboflavin, and vitamin A. Let your family enjoy nourishing, delicious Velveeta sandwiches often. Remember, Velveeta is the cheese food that's digestible as milk itself. The cheese food of top quality, made only by Kraft. This is Gildersleeve again. Thanks to Bertie and the children, our little journey to the mountaintop for the Easter sunrise was a very wonderful experience. I hope that for each one of you, this Easter will bring renewed faith in the promise he gave to all of us. Renewed strength to follow his light through these days when the forces of darkness endeavor to confuse our path. Thank you all. Bertie, your song was lovely. Thank you, Mr. Gilfrey. Good night, everybody. See you next week. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The Kraft Food Company's traditional Easter program was written by John Elliott and Andy White and was partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Joe Enos, Mary Shipp, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. Musical composition by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. What goes into a perfect sandwich? Maybe it's roast beef or savory baked ham. Whatever your favorite, the perfect meat sandwich needs the perfect mustard. Kraft prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. You can take your choice of two kinds of Kraft mustard. Mild Kraft mustard is smooth and delicately spiced. Or if you like your mustard with extra pep, try Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Keep them both on hand and keep everyone in the family happy. Next time, get Kraft Prepared Mustard. Tonight, join Groucho Marx for You Bet Your Life on NBC.